Hi everyone, this is Todd Talks. I'm Todd. Uh, this is Jim Davis from WebDM. And today we're talking about the new Unearthed Arcana subclasses part two. Um, we've oh, yes. had a lot more than part two, but that's part two for 2020. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, uh, like I'm ready for like a 500 page, just like all the yeah. subclasses, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> This is like one page. <laughs> it might be part 17. Right. Um, but this is a lot easier than writing Thief Rogue Fighter Warlock. Oh, sure, sure, right. <laughs> over and over and over again. Right. So we've got a bunch of interesting new subclasses. And let's go ahead and start with Bard. We have the College of Creation. Can you walk me through this? Yeah. So it seems that the uh, College of Creation is this uh, tapping into the Song of Creation. This is a, a part of like bardic lore and, and mm -hmm. sort of like D&D &D lore that, at least for me, I first saw in, say, the Book of Exalted Deeds for uh, mm. for third edition, the <laughs> Book of Exalted Cheese. I remember, <laughs> right? Yes. Right. Uh, and then, Ooh, but wow, might that have, brings me back. That brings you back, yeah. Um, and so, I'm trying to think if there's something before that. Uh, but this idea that, like, the primal magic that that formed the multiverse in in the in the sort of like implied world of D and D is this song of creation. Like, whatever creator entity there is, whether it's Ao in, in Forgotten Realms or or some. Uh, ultimately, to me, the DM is, is who we're talking about here. Uh, then uh, this is what they used. And so this uh, subclass seems as though it taps into that. And uh, it starts out with the uh, third level uh, feature, Note of Potential. Um, you, man you can manipulate the Song of Creation to summon a floating musical note of possibility. Uh, and whenever you give a creature a bardic inspiration die, you can create a note of potential. It orbits within five feet of the creature. It is a tiny object that is intangible and invulnerable and lasts until the bardic inspiration die is lost. Um, and it can be used in one of three ways as a note of destruction, <clears throat> which is uh, sort of lets them add to an attack roll whenever they use their immediately after uh, they've used their bardic inspiration die. Uh, they can then expend the note to create a burst of sound in, uh, affecting each creature within five feet, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, of the note that they must succeed on a constitution saving throw against the spell or take thunder damage equal to what you rolled on the inspiration die. Mm -hmm. um, and then protection is, uh, is uh, allows you to expend the note uh, to gain temporary hit points equal to the inspiration die plus your charisma modifier. I'm guessing that's the bard's uh, charisma modifier there. Uh, that would make sense. Otherwise... Why would it be in the description? <laughs> yeah. And then the uh, note of ingenuity is uh, when a creature rolls the bardic inspiration die to add to an ability check, the creature can expend the note to roll a bardic inspiration die again and choose which roll to use. So it's almost like... Start filing. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> you use two bardic inspirations in a row, basically. Yeah, basically. Choose the, choose the best one. So yeah, I like right off the bat, it's uh, the versatility of this is like I, I really like you know normally it's like you gotta pick one and then go with it uh i like here that you could switch it up it's kind of in the camp of uh, college of swords in that way right like you right. have a you have multiple things you can do here um mm -hmm. yeah this is really cool and this is very much you know rooted rooted in uh, like welsh mythology especially well welsh, welsh, oh, yeah. welsh wizards and mythology uh sang uh, so they were very much bards um, yeah. from the get go. I think I also Irish wizards, um, uh, Gaelic ones. Um, I was going to say the the Faculian lyricist is always one of those. Uh, like in third edition, was a, a weird multi class combo of with like bard, rogue, and druid. Right. <laughs> oh wow, man. Okay, but that's would, yeah. If right? you can get that far in D and D, um, yeah. So like the, the there's a there's an intersection. Of course, like bard and druid are from the same sort of Celtic mythology. They they come yeah. from that, right? So yeah, it they, makes they, sense. They, they, there's, there's a lot of crossover in that, even though yeah. not mentally for people. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Not not in the 21st century, but trust us that they <laughs> yeah. they come from the same place, relatively speaking. Um, so at sixth level, the uh, the College of Creation bard. Uh, gains the animating performance and I, I love the imagery of this one 
uh, because it's, it says your mastery over the song of creation allows you to magically bring items to life. Mm-hmm. As an action, <laughs> target a large or smaller non-magical item you can see within 30 feet of you and animate it. It, uh, it uses the uh, dancing item stat block, which is uh, below in the description, uh, and is under your control for one hour or until reduced to zero hit points. Uh, shares your initiative in combat and takes its turn immediately after yours. Um, it can move and use its reaction on its own, but only action it takes on its turn is dodge unless you use your bonus action to command it. And then it's like dash, disengage, help hide, etc. So it's like a lot of what we've been seeing recently with like the uh, subclasses that get a pet. Uh, this is sort of the, I, I just, I love the idea of just... <laughs> And playing a song and something animates and then yeah. using your tiny servant and <laughs> you know i would play this i would play this bard and i would play it strongly wizard for myself because i do yeah. very i do very much like this actually yeah. and i would like do something where you like you go up to a, like a gilded frame mirror and whisper into it it's ear, yeah. or like a carved gargoyle and whisper into its ear its true name and then it like just awakens yeah. right yeah um, yes yeah. There's a lot of fun there. Um, and I always like bards who don't sing for some reason. I know I'm a terrible person for uh, liking that. Oh, sure. So I do gravitate towards college, you know, the College of Swords or or a bard who just um, says things that ring true. You know, always reminds oh, me of sure. that, Gan- that Gandalf line. Yes, yeah. I mean, Gandalf is easily, easily, if you look at him a separate way, he's very much bard over here. Right? Oh, like, yeah. You can call yourself a wizard all day long, man, but I don't see a spell book. <laughs> so I mean, you, you of, got that sword swinging over there. <laughs> one of the first magical things you see Gandalf do in The Hobbit is talk crap to, to trolls. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. <laughs> he inspires others, right? Yeah, like the Ring of Fire. Vicious mm-hmm. mockery, clearly. Um, oh, yeah. Enemies yeah, yeah. abound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, I really, I really, uh, I like the image of that. And so I, I, I think there is overlap between like bard and just general mage yeah. archetype, right? Like, it, you know, Especially sorcerer. Fifth edition bard. Is certainly, like, yeah. So yeah. Versatile. I wouldn't say overpowered. It's just, it is still very much the jack of all trades. But man, if you want to be a little bit combat and a little bit old caster. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely so, definitely so, and so I, I like that for uh, this. I think College of of Creation fits this well. It, it's very that's very much like um, uh, the Fantasia scene with Mickey, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know, oh yeah, that's yeah. what I'm getting from this. The dancing item. Um, it has a slam D10 damage plus your charisma. Um, that yeah. uh, is kind of nice. And uh, after oh, it doesn't add your okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't add your, um, it doesn't add your stre- its strength. It doesn't add it. So let's, I want to kind of look at it just for a second to see if it's anything seems different to me. So like hit points seem about the way they've been for all these recently, where it's like mm-hmm. items, charisma modifier, plus your casting stat times, uh, times uh, uh, your level times five. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got an int of four and it can understand languages that you speak, but it doesn't, it doesn't have a language, but it wa- I want to know, can I animate something and with detect thoughts, tell what that mirror is knows like that mirror Ooh, that's well, seen all these people I, right like this gives yeah, it an into four the, that's above beast that's that's definitely a danger master ruling because you know it didn't technically have the intelligence of well did it have it though because like if Listen, you're awakening something what if you're awake yeah yeah well you know, you're yeah did it have it like latent intelligence? And what does that say about the, D- the world of D and D? Well, I am I am one of those people that like yes, if, if in the D and D, everything has narratively. Some kind of soul. I, I love it. Yeah, I like love if it I was too. being a rules lawyer, I wouldn't. But like, I mean, this is like this is why druids are way more powerful than people realize. Because where is plant life not growing? If the druid is trying to find a trap, right, or a secret door, yeah, they can talk to the moss. Yeah, sure. And and find out like yeah, how man, small are we talking? Yeah. How small of a plant are we talking? <laughs> yeah, like I would go full on like, oh, there's a little bit of like you know, little bit of moss. Sure, ask the moss. moss is is your you. is your gut flora part of the ecosystem that a, that a druid can commune with, or is it or does that constitute a separate plane? <laughs> oh man, I mean. If you really want to get into the like creepy druid stuff where you cut somebody open and you read their entrails, well, then I yeah, would say I'm, yes. I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that anytime. Anytime. Uh, so anyway. 
kind of hard to i don't know if they would program program that directly into D, &D but that's pretty cool i don't know i don't know but i, I so i'm looking at the this dancing item and that that's where my mind goes immediately into four like not an into nothing yeah not you know it's true um and it that's has just some charisma <laughs> it has some charisma six a 10 wisdom like it's as it's as wise as the average peasant I, I, my main character doesn't have wisdom that, that oh sure right now <laughs> sure <So>. uh, <laughs> but uh back to more perhaps uh, uh relevant uh talk yeah. about the uh, endless waltz is like it allows you to take a uh, a dodge action as a bonus action right after a slam so this is sort of, this says to me this like depending on what you're animating well i guess it doesn't really matter it's just any kind of large or smaller construct you kind of have a your own uh, bodyguard <laughs> by uh, six levels so that's kind of cool do you um, have to use your bonus action to have it do endless waltz i uh, well you would have to have it uh in order for it to uh i guess make its attack uh and one of the actions in its stat block including its its attack dash disengage help hide or search i mean it takes the dodge action if it does nothing ah uh, but it, it's like if you use your okay, bonus action okay, okay, it's yeah, still yeah. going to hit and get a dodge uh, okay. is how i'm reading that right um yeah so um yeah that's pretty cool and then finally we come to performance of creation 14th level uh through your performance you can manipulate the magic of creation briefly transforming the world around you as an action create one non-magical item of your choice in an occupied space within 10 feet of you the item must appear on a surface or in a liquid that can support it the gold piece value of the item can't be more than 20 times your bard level and must be and the object must be large or smaller so no i guess giant castles or <laughs> or big uh, pirate ships uh, tiny glimmering and tangible notes float around it and a creature can faintly hear music uh, when touching it um, so let's see for examples of items you can create see the armor weapons adventuring gear tools mounts and vehicles tables in chapter 5 of php uh, the created item disappears at the end of your next turn unless you use your action to maintain it. Each time you use your action this way, the item's duration is extended to the end of your next turn up to a maximum of one minute. If you maintain, an item, uh, you maintain the item for the full minute, it continues to exist for a number of hours equal to your bard level. And this is, I don't, I didn't see anything about concentrating. You just have to use your action, right? Yeah, uh, this yeah. is um <laughs> once you create an item this feature, you can't do so again, T fish long rest, etc. This kind of gives me a nosebleed. Uh this is uh <laughs> Yeah, this is one of those you want to parse through uh and kind of condense, it, yeah. Because if you thought illusion magic for the illusionist was uh yeah. potentially dangerous for the DM, um then we have this. Uh why can't you I mean, make a giant, you know, a giant acme, you know. Oh yeah, Any, ton weight and, and anything Looney, on somebody. Looney Tunes right here. As an action, I'm going to create. Uh, I you know this is 14th level, 14 times 20. I'm not going to worry about that, but I don't know. I'm going to create all of that much gold in acid above the group. <laughs> you know, like I want, like that's the kind of thing I want to know because you're creating an object, right? Yeah. You're creating a thing, and that yeah. is powerful. I, I almost I feel it. like there should be a, um, there could be a little guidance here where, okay, oh, sure. if you are intending damage, hmm. here is your limitations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much damage can this do? Right, sure. because, I mean, oof. I mean, the illusionist is super powerful. I wouldn't say that the, being an illusionist is OP at all. I, it does take a lot of buy-in from the dungeon master, certainly. Yeah, but yeah, also, yeah. I would question why aren't you playing with a dungeon master who has a buy-in for illusion magic? Sure. Um, because that's the fun. Yeah. yeah I, but but this is like this is like a boulder that's rolling downhill. Um, sure. You know, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> you 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 create a wall. I mean, this is this should be indeed. Um, it is very Green Lantern. I love um, it. Yep, and makes the the Forge domain seem silly, uh, <laughs> or the Abjuration Wizard. Uh, this is this is crazy. This is like a really fun power. Um, yeah, you, it really is player and DM. It's so player and DM dependent. Big but, and you should have that right by the time you have fourteenth yeah. level. I wouldn't let oh, someone one. play this in like a one shot necessarily because I mean, yeah, I, I'd be like these the the players' handbook items are not examples. They're they're things I have pre-approved and 
we're not going to worry about anything else, you know. Plus, you know, you need that calculator out to figure like, okay, how much of a <laughs> like alchemist fire? Can you, can you right? Yeah. Okay. Bucket of I'm, alchemist I'm, fire. I, if if the player is willing to shoulder the burden of the calculation, like this is one of those things. You played this class, you picked it. You yeah. see this big big chunk of sub of subclass ability right here. Then, as a player, I expect at you to come to you say okay i use performance of creation and when i go and glance at it and i go okay well what is the value of the item you can use for johnny on the spot you got it you know you make two tons <laughs> of uh purple worm poison <laughs> oh, <right. Like> <gasps> poisons all time poisons okay so this really like we need a definition of well you don't need this is more for just funsies but what is a non-magical item what is it really yeah. But, yeah. Is can it be something that was once organic? Yeah. Anyway. All right. I think it's they're big question. <laughs> I love this. I love this the more we talk about it. Oh yeah. man. And there's no way to get that plus that sweet illusion feature that lets you make objects that you yeah. turn illusions. There's you can't yeah, literally the creation spell. Yeah. Um yeah. Okay. yeah, it's a very interesting bard. It's probably one of the ones I would I'd gravitate gravitate towards the most uh, yeah. next to College of uh, Swords um because it is so kind of weird and outside mm -hmm. the normal space of a bard um yeah cleric the unity domain um uh, this is interesting because a lot of this is like buffing your party or making your party stronger sure um, so this is the kind of cleric that typically would oversee you know uh, go and run me through this but it looks like you know like yeah any I, kind of bonding customs ritual bonding customs of any kind I, I, weddings that sort of thing I, I was kind of like, I, this one I was kind of curious about because my first thought was like, this is like a, the community domain from right. what I remember from uh, whichever third edition it was. So that's kind of how I was thinking of it. This is the, this is a good, like, uh, it represents the, the village priest who has gone off to fight evil to keep, you know, the, you know their flock uh, um, protected. That's how I would see it. It's sort of like you can see a lot of these being first level like NPCs. Sure, you know, yeah. This is, this is the cleric that exists in like every town kind of thing. Right, right. We have an alternative to the life cleric for your uh, henchman cleric needs, if, if you right. will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I think like um, in this case, they, you know, they're overseeing like I said uh, rituals of friendship, blood, faith, etc. Uh, you would assume that they're you know handling marriages, family bonding customs. This unity's deity list, I appreciate because off the top of my head i couldn't think of a like deity that exemplified this in in like say forgotten realms or mm. any of the other ones i'm familiar with um and other than athena <laughs> i all of these are, are kind of uh leave me scratching my head uh many of them i don't even recognize um so so they right. give you at least a nice little list of examples that you can look up for uh your own benefit um and then goes into say domain spells. Um, I really like this domain spell list just because it's like, oh yeah, it emphasizes that part of the cleric that's like, uh, you know, just stri strictly in combat terms, like getting rid of the <laughs> enemy, getting them to stop fighting you is sort of the quickest. It's sort of the best way to prevent damage. Uh, you know, it's it's in one sense sort of power gamey by the numbers approach to it. But like you can yeah, justify like it narratively. Warding bond is purely that, and I love yeah. warding bond. I I always like bubbling because I play a lot of Star Wars: The Old Republic, and then there's literally that's a very sure. uh, MMO type of ability to be very, the tank in a way. Very much, and like because this, I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit, but because this cleric gets potent spell casting and not the heavy armor, um, uh, um, uh, uh, divine smite uh, feature. This is more of like a caster uh, cleric. Mm -hmm. And so they're probably not like at risk of the extra damage that, that meleeers take, you know, whereas if say you're a tempest or some of the other types of just get up in their face kind of clerics. Yeah. You, this, this is not the cleric that should already be taking damage. Um, right. So you can, yeah. So you can afford to say have warding bond, like the warding bond plus shield of faith are that, that's kind of a potent combo, especially like I find if you can cast a shield of faith on someone that already has a 20 AC, yeah. Then you've functionally made them invulnerable. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, like <laughs> yeah. And wording bond also applies to think a plus one to their AC as well. So like, I yeah. mean, if you're taking half their damage, the tank is like uber tank. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, so we also have aid uh, to round out uh, in her- heroism and aid for the next two, and then uh, beacon of hope, sending or of purity, guardian of faith, uh, and then greater restoration, uh, Rary's telepathic bond. Uh, which, depending on about your play style at your table, might be a really great spell or might be just nothing at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, any any of those stand out other than uh, no? Long? But they, these all this is a good domain spell list. Um, yeah. They, these these are all all are very on theme. Uh, Certainly. Uh, yeah, I agree. Like community makes a little bit more sense, but it doesn't sound as cool as unity. I guess. Um, Certainly. Yeah. Uh, you can. F- you know, at first level, you can forge an empowering bond between all your allies. They have to be willing. That's super mm. important. Yes. While either bonded creature is within 30 feet of each other, the creature can roll a d4 and add that number rolled to the attack roll. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> An ability check or a saving throw it makes. Each creature can add up to the d4 no more. Than one. Oh, that's funny. When I was just discussing a, a, an ability much like this, actually, for a, a very evil warlock. Um, uh, <laughs> this bond. La- this is fun. This is yeah. like again. This is a nice community, you know, s- strength in numbers kind of thing. Well, and it's also because it's like you're doubling up on uh, bless the first level spell, and then like what is it? Guidance, the cantrip, yeah. or resistance. You know, so it's like you're getting a you're getting more bang for your buck uh yeah, not, a lot of not, bang for your buck because, not using your concentration <laughs> yeah. this is i mean okay when are you not going to be in a party right Certainly, so this right. this is really like you're always going to have three or four people um yeah. and yeah. this this stacking with bless is super powerful if you got paladin in the party and you got like a you gain like a plus to your belt your your saving throws as well on top of this yeah Man, this this is like where the I wonder this is kind of challenging the CR rating of an encounter, right? You know, I certainly say so. Yeah, especially if you're yeah you're adding two d eight to every like if that's the kind of uh, and I can certainly see some players wanting that, you know, right. uh, and and going for that. Then yeah, especially if you if you put advantage on top of it, um, I think it does. I mean, like these are the guidelines already. These sort of the CR yeah, guidelines. Yeah. This just blows them out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. This this makes. I mean, this is, this is actually a current conversation I'm, I'm having with my wife because she is determined to kill Strahd. So yeah. and solo. <laughs> and I'm like, this sounds do a it. very fun challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so do she it. she made a Shatterkai Elf Undying Warlock, and yep, that'll do it. Uh, hmm. So. If you are looking to, I feel like this is a good clerk to have if you're going on slightly higher CR adventures. Oh, certainly. Uh, already. But yeah, yeah. Think about that. Like a Shatterkai has resistance to necrotic damage. Yeah. Um, you have resistance to everything if you misty step for one turn. And then think all undead have to make a saving throw to even attack you. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. I see. I'm seeing this work. That's who you, that's who you send after Strahd. <laughs> make him work for it all his crap is not going to work um so i digress so challenge divinity shared burden uh, Mm. as a reaction i loved it this is the same reason i like this is very much the cleric that kind of matches with uh i feel just very like a very uh proto uh paladin um Mm -hmm. the oath of redemption paladin sure oh yeah Um, yeah yeah this is yeah, very ooh. hard to do damage to anybody. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, a, a redemption paladin and a unity cleric in the same group would be uh, a very well protected group. <laughs> yeah. Um, when a creature within thirty feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to choose a number, other um, a number of the other willing creatures you can see up to the number of creatures equals your wisdom modifier. Distribute mm. that damage taken between the original target and the chosen creatures. Um, each creature, they, yeah, this I, mean, I don't even need to explain this. You're basically yeah. allowing everyone to share the damage. Share the damage, yeah. Uh, and this is like I like this because uh, it's sort of like you can. It's first off that you choose creatures that you can see, so that your archer who's like 120 feet back or 100 feet back or whatever, mm-hmm. like one of the common complaints of the archer as a as an archetype in a, a game like D and D is that you're you're not contributing your hit points to the total pool that's getting reduced by the, the bloodbath up here, and like yeah, it's great you can pump out a lot of damage with a bow, but we sure could use someone not wailing on the cleric or or the wizard 
and you know usually this is a fighter or a ranger type that has a hit die and and you know like with a nice pool so you can still have that i i'm going to stay back here and snipe and bombard but i'm still contributing this resource to the overall fight mm -hmm. and I, I i really like this shared burden here uh that's really neat because you can also like oh i'll just dump all this damage onto the barbarian and give everybody else one and the barbarian's gonna resist it and be fine <laughs> something like that yeah i mean this is a whew, uh, i like this <laughs> it's very interesting um it's a lot of math yeah uh, uh like i'll take i'll take five you take four like mm -hmm. it, it starts an entire conversation within your party that's uh entirely different kind of strange it, yeah I, it's a I, very I, metagamey kind of concept that, yeah. very metagamey yeah. um and you would definitely i think this would elongate combat a bit um and then after, we get protective bond at sixth level which is basically everyone can give each other a wording bond but it <laughs> is in a nutshell if i'm reading this correct right yeah so the bond you forge between people shields them from harm uh while each creature chosen for your emboldening bond features your first level um is within 30 feet of each other, the creature can use its reaction to grant resistance to all damage to another creature when that creature takes damage, lasting until the end of the current turn. So, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. They everyone can just, has a warding bond now. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and at their leisure. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, and that lasts, um, God, it lasts that's for an hour. Uh -huh. That's as long as the emboldened bond lasts for an hour that you can do that. Plus, you've got the shared burden of it. Everybody, yeah, okay. I'm starting to see how this comes together. Um, but, you know, there's some, like, high-level kind of content that I can think of where you, like, this kind of synergy between, you know, we're going to give each other group buffs and, like, we're going to reinforce each other's strengths and kind of cover each other's weaknesses is is like how a lot of people really like to play that sort of not quite adversarial but certainly like high octane yeah uh tactical style combat and you know it, it can be uh quite uh now, perilous with with warding bond however uh i do know for a fact at least i think i know for a fact that that damage cannot be resisted when you do that effect so if you mm. you are taking damage from somebody else um who is taking that damage you cannot say um have necrotic resistance correct sure. and, and and be able to have that for yourself that that wording's not in here so right. if you've got a party where you have like say a dragonborn uh, or a draconic soul sorcery and one of those that has like fire resistance and then you have someone who has like um necrotic resistance you're playing a shatter kai mm -hmm. uh, and, and so forth and so on um you know you can have uh I believe you know Azamar have a resistance to I, I think radiant damage, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also necrotic maybe. Yeah, <laughs> so there's something like that. Both of them. You, you can really meta game the heck out of this. I wouldn't be surprised if this changes where you just have to take the damage, right? Sure. Yeah, I, I can kind of see that. I mean, it is like it grants them resistance to all damage, so it sort of like overrides whatever specific uh, yeah resistances they have, or, or really but like you supplements. You take the it. damage, right? You take uh, that damage. I don't think you don't that, take the damage that's warding at all. that's warding bond. This is something different. Okay, talking, I'm reading this wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Um I'm superimposing my own Oh no, 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 that's fine. Well, and it's also sort of like this creature, that creature. So like either of the creatures that you used with your first level power emboldening bond. So that's two any two willing creatures, yourself and the fighter, the fighter and the barbarian. Ooh, this is really powerful. Yeah. Like I wouldn't give it to a class that already has like a lot of you know, I'm not going to give yeah. it to someone whose reaction's already really spoken for, like, say, a rogue, right. you know. Uh, yeah. But I might for, I don't know, a fighter that isn't a battle master, you yeah. know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, this text better. Uh, that makes a lot more sense. Sorry, uh, everyone yeah. watching at home. Um, I'm having a distracting day. No, uh, no worries. Yeah, no worries. And this is a single wording bond. Uh, <laughs> enduring Unity, what's it? Tell me about this. All right. So uh, here we have it. 17th level, uh, the bonds you create endure across vast distances. Creatures affected by your emboldening bond feature gain its benefits, as well as those of your protective bond feature, while they are on the same, oh my, the, while they are on the same plane of existence as each other so they don't need to be within 30 feet uh, of each other uh, additionally additionally when a creature chosen 
for your emboldening bond is reduced to zero hit points, their bonded partner gains the following benefit for one minute or until the creature regains at least one hit point. Uh, and so the surviving creature gains advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. That's just a blanket roll two dice. Uh, <laughs> resistance to all damage. And as an action, the creature can touch their bonded partner to expend and roll any number of their hit dice. Their bonded partner regains a number of hit points equal to the total rolled. I am assuming that they are expending the surviving hit uh, uh, creature is expending their hit dice to give them to the unconscious and dying, not use their hit die to bring them the unconscious hit die to bring them back. That's how I'm reading it, but. Either way, I think thematically works. Mm, yeah. mm. It's yeah. really powerful. I mean, this that's is really cool. Really, yeah. So it's pretty much sort of like you gain these big benefits, fight off all the baddies. You got a minute, which how many times, how many times have you had a DD comic go over a minute and like someone drop the first round? You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's probably like probably around three or four. So you're, you're halfway through the fight anyway, maybe get rid of all the baddies and then bless your, a fallen comrade back right if they aren't already so up somehow so I, that's really cool i like that you're giving the power of the cleric to another party member and also buffing them at the same time it's so funny i was just having this discussion with james uh, <laughs> hey actually and I, I i had not really given you know the, the unity cleric i hadn't had time to like take a hard look at the un unity cleric but i'm working mm -hmm. on a warlock that does something very similar as in sharing it answers the question what what is a god <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah no uh, for real yeah and, and so yeah i'm experimenting with something uh, along the same lines um so that's, that's very really interesting cool. so clockwork really cool. soul uh i grew up in an antique clock shop so this is very yeah. interesting for me yeah. um <laughs> walk us through this one all right so uh this uh clockwork soul is a sorceress origin that is tied to the plane of utmost order that is mechanus um and where the god called uh, or godlike entity called primus uh, sort of like the head of the modrons is seen as this sort of uh I don't know, orderer of the universe or the multiverse, as it were. Yeah, uh, not even quite God. Like it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's purposely nebulous. Um, purposely nebulous. And the founder and originator of the slot, uh, right. Primus is, right? He's responsible for their, or it is responsible for the uh, the slot, yeah. uh, trying to bring order to limbo. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, don't uh, do it. Don't, don't even try. <laughs> All you get is alien covenant. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, so yes, the, through inscr uh, inscrutable calculations, uh, its vast uh, mechanical brain, um, that's basically how it operates. Uh, you or someone from your lineage might have become entangled uh, with one of the machinations of the leader of the Motrons. Uh, perhaps you were exposed to an artifact created by Primus or your ancestor took, took part in the Great Modron March in some way. I love that. Yeah. Right, because the Great Modron March is a really cool adventure that, like, you know, you hit all the kind of upper crust of the, the Planescape settings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a, uh, <laughs> sometimes you're helping them, sometimes you're opposing them. But I like just, oh, yeah, I was just there, and I guess I got gear organs now yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, <laughs> like um... they infected me with their clockworkness. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah. I have a deep love of playing artificial beings um i'm a big fan of the bl you know the blade runner series uh mm -hmm. so if i want to play kind of an artificial sorcerer this is quite um oh yeah charming to me uh this this, this kind of excites me um i kind of like this oh yeah warforged uh clock oh, for warforged for really sure cool. yeah yeah certainly um but even someone who's like i could see like a you know depending on how you like your D D, like a, a steampunk cyborg type a sorcerer is like replacing their you know the weak flesh yeah. with uh with and that's brass and steam you know yes <laughs> If you, uh, I used to, like I said, I used to repair antique clocks. If you do that, then you know a lot about brass. Mm, nice. Also about cleaning brass. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, <laughs> I love these little manifestations of mechanics. You know, you have the, the Lord spectral cogwheels up here hovering behind you, or you're, you know, the other uh, hands of a clock, you know, uh, you know, appears in your eyes. Um, 
it's all what's funny is like several of these are spot on Iceland stuff. I was about to say like this uh, this third one wait the clockwork eyes and the golden skin are we playing yeah Iceland? yeah yeah you, 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 they, 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 they didn't say hourglasses but yeah it's pretty for on sure. pretty on brand sure. for Iceland in terms of like how he looks right um and I never really kind of considered that because his skin is kind of well they say golden but it really is a brass yeah yeah most of the I, I always took it to me it was jaundiced <laughs> is what i took it oh as. interesting the <laughs> nice way of saying sick, jaundiced. sickly and uh, jaundiced oh um, i never thought about that i always thought it was a metallic golden sheen but yeah who knows they, who knows what they'll get up to in the tower of high sorcery it's but it is so- the, it is the tower of high sorcery it is that tower it's of not high the tower sorcery. of high wizardry and, uh, <laughs> by the way if you want some uh if you want the only uh time they mention drow in dragon lance that would be the choose your own adventure book that they made for raceland's test um Ooh, yeah. he, there he fights a, a drow and then they changed it to dark elf and then they changed the meaning of dark, elf, dark to elf basically be some guy who doesn't really gel with the rest of the elves yeah it's like the <laughs> one guy they kicked out of their fancy enchanted forest <laughs> yeah uh, always found that entertaining i wish i had kept my my uh i it was called the <laughs> the tower test or something like that i'll find it i have to buy it on ebay again oh yeah um so it's a good spell list alarm obviously mm-hmm. makes sense yes i love that <laughs> I absolutely on the nose uh protection from evil and good find traps of course of course mm-hmm. you would be able to find traps heat metal yeah, makes, makes tons spell. of sense counter spell makes sense you 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 know the mechanics of mm-hmm. uh the weave itself glyph of warding absolutely arcane eye um Resilient sphere, sure. Animate objects, definitely. Wall of force. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Want I, I can't think. Wall of force, uh, you know, right. clockwork wall would be kind Ooh, of fun. Yeah, like it's, really fun. If you touch it, you get ground to, <laughs> to nothing. So it's, it almost functions wall. as a, ooh, like a wall of thorns, but it's gears. Yeah, a wall of gears. Yeah. I say, isn't there a. I don't know. The not first off, official D&D, uh, yeah, not official. There's would be cool. Yeah, yeah there's, there's some really, uh, I think there's some really fun uh, Cobalt Press products that will work well with this sorcerer. Right. But, um, but in these, like, there's nothing that I can think of from the official spell list that wall jump out of at nails. me. <laughs> wall of nails, yes. Wall, wall of rusty nails, wall of tennis. <laughs> there's nothing in uh, the, the, um, the Lost Laboratory of Qualish that uh there's no this, like, i'll have to take a look yeah, flock right. of familiars is the only one that i think that came out of that there's a lot of cool magic items i'd rather um, like flock of familiars actually yeah but um all right so nothing jumps out as me as like oh my god this is awesome but also i like it, it's it's a solid uh bonus spell list and i just mm-hmm. like that it's become standard standard yeah. sorcerers get these uh spells here uh so restore balance is the uh, first one here um your connection to the plane of absolute order allows you to equalize chaotic moments when a creature you can see within 60 feet of you is about to roll a d20 with advantage or disadvantage you can use your reaction to prevent the roll from being affected by advantage and disadvantage um you can use this feature a number of times equal to your charisma f- modifier and they refresh on a long rest that's kind of cool it is and it took me a while to really realize okay because i don't normally typically use that kind of thing against that being at, being able to nullify disadvantage is great being able to nullify that yeah yeah that is a bummer for your players doing yeah. that i mean man it sucks when the enemy has advantage <laughs> if you but boy if you're in, like not that you should be pvping and D, but if you just want to shut a rogue down oh yeah and never let them get their sneak attack oh yeah yeah. Or if you even want to be like the meanest sorcerer in the party and you and the rogue don't get along and you just keep <laughs> keep on doing this. Right. Do they know? <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me, just I had a... sending your dungeon master Yeah, that's the notes. other thing. Do they know? Like, yeah, Do just only... Do they the... know that you're doing this effect? Because <laughs> that you... makes you a target, man. Like, this is annoying. Like, yes. I had, it reminds me of a homebrew monster that I, I built where there was an aura and around them, you you did not roll a d20, you just had 10. Like they, yeah. they completely got rid of like random. And so you use just the average of any die roll that you were supposed to use in the situation. And if your die, if that average, it's mm. basically like if your passive attack was enough to overcome the AC, then... Oh, weird, man. And so it just was like, the idea was that it had a really high ac uh that you could never hit that way and so you had to think of other ways to try to defeat it other than just beating it up in melee that's fascinating Uh, 
Um, I don't know if I'd do that, but that certainly must be up combat in some weird way. And yeah, eventually you're fighting something that just you can't. Yeah, you just can't. You've got to like you got to. They ended up like blocking it off and then just burying it and walking away. I, I would. They never came back for him. So I wouldn't say no to an unearthed arcana that is specifically tailor made uh, for live streaming D anD D and speeding up combat. Though I do quite Ooh. enjoy watching combat. I think uh, I actually feel like Matt Mercer is really great at yeah uh, showing combat, especially with like. I, the mini game up on that show is just like nuts. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, As, in so terms much of so just, that it's no longer like taking you out of theater of the mind, in my opinion. It's creating miniatures theater. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> when you have fog rolling in and there's like lighting effects, yeah. Then then it's it's it becomes something else. Very much um, so. Yeah. So that's that's strong. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I would say if I was gonna do that, I would just get rid of attack rolls and just assume that you hit. And let's just skip straight to damage. Yeah, yeah. And I can't think of a. I mean, I think I played a game that was kind of like that. It was it was all point based. Uh, it was you were all basically gods. Oh yeah. Um, Amber. Amber. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, right, man, yeah, I was like before. last time I played that. I was like sixteen. Right. <laughs> um, maybe fourteen. Uh, yeah. You, so the bulwark of law. RPG. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> Uh, very law. terrifying at the time everyone's like i don't understand yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um bulwark of law walk me through that one all right so here we go we invite you imbue a creature with a shimmering shield of order as an action expend one to five sorcery points to create a magical ward around yourself or another creature you can see within 30 feet of you last until you finish a long rest or until you use this feature again um, and it, the ward is represented by a number of D8s equal to the number of sorcery points spent to create it. And the warded creature takes damage. It can use its reaction to spend a number of those dice, rolling them and reducing the damage taken by the total of the dice spent. I like this, I but the, this. Ran, the randomness of it doesn't jive with like the whole ordered, you know, like I love oh, the, like I'm going to roll the die. Very interesting. Good you know? point. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. Like I'm, I'm just like, why wouldn't it be a fixed number? Because of whatever. But I love the. I just love this mechanic. I love what it does. Yeah. Oh man. Like I wish this was our nasty of you. (laughs) Yeah, I love this power, but yeah, I mean, at its core, thematically, be a random number. I mean, though, I will say my my. So, (laughs) talking a lot about antique clocks. So, my dad makes chaos machines now, which do have a random order to them. You wind them up, and you never know. Um, which direction I, are I didn't go. know this existed, Todd. Yes, you, they, there's yes. such. I need one of these. My dad makes handmade uh, chaos machines oh my in my house. So you wind them up, and then they they randomly. And he's most of them are like spiral based. So uh-huh, when you uh-huh. look at them, it kind of like puts you in a state. Sure. Um, because you your mind page? just can't handle all the gears moving and all this stuff. But yeah, so it, it, the weights will it will just randomly switch directions. That's really cool. No predicting it. So technically, this would, would actually make sense. Sure. But sure. it is chaos and not yeah. so much and bulwark of, does, a bulwark of law. Yeah. So let me look. But I mean, this is like I would like if it were me, I would probably You're switch. You're the clockwork soul that does not necessarily that's imply true. chaos. So yeah. yeah. Sorry, just bring bring in some deep. Listen, you're not this, is, to you, folks. this is where I this is where like I, I want that synergy between the story and the, the rules. Like I might switch out the wording of Arcane Ward from Abjurer because I can see Abjurer having that variable like it's magic. Who knows? You yeah. Know? Whereas like now this is the this is the blood of Primus. It, oh, it, it's gonna do five per five well if there's you know five well, per one or something this, this though this is what i want now now i want a story like an insurrection of modrons that are chaos that are chaos a, this is this is the rogue modrons that have impl- that have uh embraced chaos who have embraced sure. uh almost completely with like um absurdity right like nothing nothing can be like the right road to get to something um, yes yeah a weird, looking for patterns in the uh, noise if you want to see an interesting movie with captain america and uh push <laughs> which is <laughs> before he became captain america um chris chris evans is in i think a very charming film uh where um they had to all he had to write down instructions for everyone because uh the the uh the other 
the other people were able to predict where everyone was going to go as long as you knew what your intent was. So mm -hmm. he had to write little random notes to everyone and then have his mind erased so that they couldn't predict what the group, what the basically the party would do um, next because no one knew what they were going to do. They That's had to open cool. a letter first to tell them. And so That's they couldn't predict cool. where they were going. So uh, there, there's some fun in that. Um, I love Trans of the Order. This is the capstone, I believe. No, this is not the order. Order. Yeah, penultimate uh, ability here. So yeah. Trans of Order, 14th level. Uh, gain the ability, you gain the ability to enter a state of clockwork consciousness as a bonus action. Um, for the next minute, attack rolls against you can't benefit from advantage. And so it means you can't be sneak attacked uh yes. for one <laughs> by uh, assassin right and uh whenever you make an attack roll an ability check or saving throw you treat a roll uh you treat a d20 roll of nine or lower as a 10 so basically if you're like reliable uh talent uh yeah. from rogue there yeah um and you can't use it again until you finish a long rest or until you expend five sorcery points to use it again oh so you can yeah i think okay, a lot so of these there was another again one. yeah uh, there was another one I think that I missed that I think that was back in Cleric that had a similar like it's a long rest or when you do X, Y, Z, like cast a fifth mm. level spell or something like that. So this one has a similar. I'm really liking this. I really like the the it's a long rest or until you use this other class resource. Yes. Again. I um, do. Yeah. Yeah. I like I, that as I, just um, a mechanic. I feel like the sorcerer is finally, is finally coming into its own. Um, I... Uh, I, like shadow magic the shadow sorcerer you get to spawn darkness was kind of the start of that like you can create yeah. darkness you can see in that darkness you can also create a shadow be a hound and this is where i'm like okay this is this the niche that sorcerers need because ma yeah. meta magic wasn't enough for me no, it did belong no. to the wizard for a very long time yeah being able to create things with points um yeah fun very fun yeah yeah getting being able to do like unique things with your magic because no one else is able to do that no one else has that bond with their magic yeah is one because that, like, it's in your blood is it's in your blood let the wizard perfect what's known let them invent crazy new spells and things like that but like you're like a virtuoso calling these things forward yeah. no one else can kind of replicate that that's where the sorcerer really shines to me so, the, yeah. the cleric asks for magic uh you know yeah. the the druid kind of is magic <laughs> in the sense yeah yeah um the warlock steals it the sorcerer is it you know is, has yeah. it within them um so like the druid is just communing with magic i guess is the best I, yeah it's, it's sort of like channeling the primal magic like that's sort of I, primal is one of those things that i wish they'd kept from fourth edition like there's a there's actually a lot of, of really cool things that i think fourth edition added and one of them was like primal just as a as a third divine has okay. so Primal. much good in it actually it really does, um, it really does. uh i wasn't uh, a huge fan of combat talk. yeah yeah uh but yeah there were used to be just the arcane divine and like we don't have that now that's not even really that much of a thing anymore but mm -hmm. i really like arcane divine and primal as the three uh uh triumvirates of magic sources yeah so clockwork cavalcade and they do so very specifically say so you summon spirits of order to restore balance around you i'm yeah. gonna ignore that i'm gonna say i summon you know creatures <laughs> of chaos <laughs> but, um go ahead and walk me through this so the clockwork cavalcade is uh, summoning spirits of order to restore balance around you as an action you summon spirits in a 30-foot cube originating from you uh, the spirits look like modrons or other constructs of your choice. They are intangible and invulnerable, work fast and efficiently, and create the following effects within the cube before vanishing. Um, spirits restore up to 100 hit points, divided as you choose amongst any number of creatures of your choice within the cube. Uh, it can Any damaged objects entire, entirely within the cube are repaired, and uh, every spell of 6th level or lower ends on creatures and objects of your choice in the cube that's kind of cool uh <laughs> that last one uh and then once you use this action you can't use it again until you finish a long rest or expend a, or expend seven sorcery points to use it again um so yeah how is and then uh i guess it's just lasts um i don't see a duration it just i think it just like lasts it just uh happens yeah I, yeah yeah I it like just happens this. Yeah, for a second I thought it was like they someone. I guess it's the uh, they work fast and efficiently. I was like, okay, so like it's a minute, but no, I think this is pretty much instantaneous. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, it's interesting. 
I wish I had more experience with super high level combat. I've s- certainly played, you know, several, you know, level 21 shots. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I, I, 100 hit points is a lot. Like, that's a guaranteed 100. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of what heal gives I, you. Don't now. yet, exactly. Like, I need to know, like, okay, but would you be getting that from Cure Wounds, say, from the yeah. Divine Soul Sorcerer? Sure. Or healing, you know, any of the healing spells. Um, any damaged objects entirely in the cube are repaired. Uh, who knows seven. how that might may or may not be functional. If someone's trying to tear with, you know, tear apart a castle um, or a gate. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was the other thing. So, for one, heal does 70. So, this is better than a heal okay. in terms of, and it can be divided can amongst any number of creatures. Um, so there's at least that, uh, uh, but it's the thing here with like any damaged objects entirely in the cube are repaired. So it's, uh, 30 feet originating from you, which I guess you, if you're using minis, that'd be weird because you'd have to measure from the vortex. Anyway, vertex. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. We're not worried about it. Uh, <laughs> but like, I would say like, does the tower count as separate from the walls oh, right, next right. to it yeah, does the yeah. gatehouse separate from that like i would be pretty liberal in in adjudicating what is entirely within the cube at, at 18 bubble i would be too like that yeah. could be like a, a battle changer you know not not abusive but in like a, a war setting certainly like super useful yeah yeah because to me this is sort of like i'm you know the clockwork cavalcade go you know go go into the breach like they've they've stormed our planar barricade and you know whatever coming through the the clockwork cavalcade could go there and just like instantly repair a wall or something like that even though it's not entirely within this 30 foot box i i kind of would be very liberal on how i interpreted this second one in that instance yeah um especially yeah, this, and I, 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 I get why it's a square because you know modrons typically mm-hmm. are very yeah, geometric but uh circle makes sense because gears so, sure circle makes sense uh, oh, all I, kinds of modron shapes like they yeah, come in yeah, our, yeah. our spheres as well so uh-huh. I, I could see that being changed later na- later on um every spell of six level or lower i mean this this cures like you know blindness and all oh, kinds man. of other things um yeah I was, I was about to look up and just just a casual search of like all the spells of sixth level or lower and i can think of like for banishment you're would it get rid of that <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah that's an interesting one because you're Force not technically can... there for it to be removed though yeah so it's like can, all the creatures of your choice in the cube this, this is a very like when you start digging into how is banishment dispelled right <laughs> It's a ve- this gets to be a very contentious. <laughs> uh, oh man! Sorry. Is yeah. it on the is it on the caster? Can you dispel it from them? Is it on the person? Well, they're in a different plane. Yeah. Uh, I usually I rule it as it's the point at which they banished. Right, because they that, do you know, they 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 are still tethered. They're going yeah, to return. They're going to return. Yeah, there's still something there. Mag- if you have a detect magic up when you do it, you'd see it. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? That's yeah. how I rule it. Yeah, uh, this is not like uh, I don't feel like this is an explosive power. No, no. at eighteenth level, um, certainly not. Not when you've got ninth level spells in the mix here. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of I want I mean, you know my my initial reaction is just like kind of like something a little bit more like whoa. Yeah. yeah. Um, getting a hundred hit points, nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's more than just it's certainly. like it's yeah it's more than just it's any of them you want within this radius like do you have some of them who are affected by a you know a debuff others who are under a you know some kind of curse or something it's like it's any of them uh in, you know including ones on your enemies that they're benefiting from right so yeah. like that's i think that's the strength of the last bullet point there i, I you know it'd be interesting to have like kind of some kind of slow or haste like feature as well um, oh yeah i could see that right oh yeah someone just mentioned someone in chat said something about ending concentration effects that would be cool that would be like a big blanket like not only have you like reduced any of the um the negative effects that are affecting the group within the cube but also all the concentration effects that are of your choice i would say yeah um like darkness and stuff like that would be not oh enough. yeah That's that would be there. much bigger because then you can target the enemy and shut them down yeah yeah um, certainly yeah that's 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 a very good point um and then i feel like it would be like super right. op but certainly like uh, does that get rid of time. conjured creatures i don't know how often that uh those pop up in in your fights but conjured creatures would go away oh wow um yeah there's a lot of actually if you and think that, about that, it that, that, yeah. that makes sense for order you yeah know? 
Um, yeah. So we got some questions. Yeah, I liked Wall of Nails. Uh, <laughs> is there a Clockwork Android Avern clone yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there will be. Uh, I'm definitely giving Avern a much lighter touch lately because I don't. Um, playing semi omnipotent characters isn't all that fun. I like the low key <laughs> characters who are like the victim of themselves. Um, and Avern is very much that. But yeah, uh, Clockwork Avern would probably make sense, but he would be against the machine and the uh, chaos. So, uh, yeah, let's see what else. Uh, question: Clockwork Soul crosses paths with a wild mage. <laughs> what happens? Yeah. Uh, wow, question. those are two sorcerers that will not get along just thematically, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like a life domain cleric hanging out with a death domain or a necromancer. <laughs> yeah, I I might like, especially because this is like so so much a part of their being, right? This is we're talking like their souls are incompatible. Like, if mm -hmm. I might, uh, I, that's a great. So that'd be a great foil if you have like a clockwork soul or a wild soul in your party, like having a foil for them that's the uh, opposite soul that's sort of like, yeah, not I the mean, enemy, but just their I mean, nemesis. It really is a foil in the sense, like, a you know, I played an assassin for a long time. Abram was an assassin for a very long time. I played that uh, yeah. in third edition and, you know, constant, you know, friction between me and the paladin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I was up to. Yeah. Um, and I, man, I gotta tell you, I loved third edition assassin. Third edition assassin was just <laughs> death's kiss good. I miss the assassin that can cast silence. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it, that's it, true. It, that's it, true. It, I forgot about that. Third level assassin really was like, okay, what are all the things I want? Right here, you go. <laughs> here you go. Take those. <laughs> um, prestige class certainly, so it made sense. <laughs> it took you a while oh, to yeah. get to it. Oh yeah, you were eighth level by then, I if surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, I had to work yeah, towards that. that stuff, man. You deserve that. Yeah. Um, in terms of like mechanic stuff, I'm not sure I would like have them cancel each other out because that's doesn't seem no, like it would be an no. engaging uh, game outcome. I think it's but, a fun role playing thing. Yeah, I would certainly say with a role playing, or maybe there's like certain like I, I would be more open to edge cases or like context specific shenanigans yeah than just blanket statements you know like maybe right. maybe they can use your restore balance to mess with your wild uh, uh, um, tides of chaos uh, mm -hmm. features of which technically by the rules they could uh except they can only, do, only up to their charisma modifier but like maybe there's a way you can also sort of reverse that as well and like you can i don't know uh there's a there's a lot know. of other abilities i would like the clockwork to have um i think that, so. you know you can do anything like you know like could it you know could you give someone a spell slot back or something you know with your Ooh, your, your super yeah. high ability because you rewind the clock right yes yeah um, but there's a so, lot of like short-term time magic i could see going on with this yeah um and you can like innately at the idea that you can innately just see the workings of the weave on like a diviner as well like there's there's, there's a lot of potential with this kind of concept and mm -hmm. i don't i don't know that one sorcerer version of that could ever like encapsulate all of it yeah um, this certainly one is this one's totally balanced towards like balance yeah, yeah it's very totally much so. focused towards you know creating balance and not chaos um and not necessarily manipulating yeah um, just kind of you would be interested it'd be you'd be hard pressed not to play a lawful I was, gonna, I was gonna say that i feel like they'd be someone who just was like their entire life is built around that like what they eat how they live right it's all about uh, this sort of uh, holistic approach a very meticulous individual you know you and, see that yeah I mean, yeah that doesn't understand chaos or even may, like maybe um emotion and all, right. like, all kinds of things that you know uh, almost vulcan yes um no but, yeah there's a lot of cool rp well we were already uh, out of time it is three o'clock so oh. i hope i hope we asked every, answered everyone's questions i know i think there were maybe some questions about grungs I, i'm not aware of um oh yeah but <laughs> see yeah, those. <laughs> yeah it, it's a it's a very an interesting unearthed arcana i'm i'm curious what the third one is going to be um Oof, it, yeah it's been a ton of ua so um, it really has and then very yeah very character focused so i very this, character focused and party focused party focused very much so and i you know i'm liking the new stuff and uh it, it's all reads planescape to me but that's uh, neither here nor there <laughs> doesn't mean anything uh or it, you know anything it's, it's all very planescape -y. yeah <laughs> it is pretty plain <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks so much for uh, joining us in chat and we will see you next week.